you eat cookies, cakes, and pies? Do you like soy sauce on Chinese stir fry? Soybean flour, soybean oil. No, you just can't go wrong when you sing my soybean song. I say it, I say it again, you've been had, you've been took, you've been hoodwinked, bamboozled, let us stray, run on muck, this is what he does. You've been had, and what makes matters worse is you're allowing it. A lifetime of nutritional deception has forced us into the fight for our lives. We are the plant-based riot. We are here to tear down that curtain of secrecy created by our very own American food industry. A plant-based diet and a disease-free life are not out of reach. Make the choice. Rolling. <laughs> Hot damn. Ha <laughs> Okay. Like I said, I'll, I'll be jumping over there every so often to uh, re-roll that roll. All right, guys. Uh, okay, so this is going to be uh, beginning of the episode for syncing two cameras together. There you go. All right. Um, feeling good, Mister Doctor Doctor Brian? I'm feeling still a little under the weather, uh -huh. but uh, I can hear it a little bit. Got Sounds... that sexy, sexy does, voice. Yeah. I don't know if it's the 4:30 a.m. voice or the sick <laughs> voice or conversation or a combination of the both. It's probably all of, it. of all the, the two. Above. Keep it going. <laughs> I have the sniffles. <laughs> there it is, folks, on the bell. Um, guys, today we're talking soy, and we're getting to the bottom of this American soy presumption. The soy awakening is upon us today. Okay, um, soy in its natural state is safe, normal, nutritious food. True or false? True. Okay. Today, we want to thank... Whisper Farms. Whisper Farms is a co-op of backyard farms and gardens providing greens and fruits available at the Atwater Village Farmer's Market. Come check him out. Moringa Mike, what's in season? What's going on at the market? What do you want to try next? You know, I, I would love to try soybeans. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Soybeans? Yeah. It sounds crazy. You know, people are, are used to hearing that it's ho so horrible, but I love soybeans uh, as a sprout. They're very easy to sprout. They're so delicious. Um... They're nice and crunchy and sweet, and you can throw that in a stir fry, and uh, that's an easy meal that's healthy. Well, you heard, you guys heard it here first. Soy delicious. If we had any sponsors, we would have just lost all of them right now by that <laughs> statement you just said. <laughs> Scary, right? You know, I no. There's so many beans uh, that are so easy to sprout, and they're so healthy. You know, mung beans. That's what. That's another one I'm gonna do, and the soybean belongs right in there. With all the other pantheon of wonderful beans, let's give it. Let's get it back there. And you yeah. know, just really quick, a lot of people that I do work with, they they don't know what sprouting is, so they ask me like, "What what is sprouting?" I know we've mentioned it on the show before, but since you are a superior sprouter, can you just tell us what sprouting would do to a soybean, and okay. even the lectin content? Because we're going to talk about lectins in the near future. So when you sprout, you're essentially. Um, beginning the germination process the growing process of the bean as uh, if as if you were going to Oktoberfest the germination <laughs> you're here <laughs> as if you're going to plant a vegetable in the ground um, this is kind of like a trick a way of tricking the plant into thinking it's going to grow except you're not putting it in soil you're putting it in a jar or a container uh, and you rinse it with water you know and when when you do that you're starting to puff up the seed it starts to absorb the water it starts to uh, leach certain anti-nutrients that's in the seed, telling the plant to stay asleep. When you start to leach away those those nutrients, it starts to sprout. It starts to send out a root, and then it sends out a, a small leaflet, primordial leaf. And so by sprouting, you're kind of um, very quickly in, the, in a matter of days um, causing the plant to grow. And then as soon as it's just a few inches tall you're done and you can you can cook it in and in some cases have it raw 
and um, it's a delicious, crunchy vegetable that only takes a few days to grow. I love it. Well, you guys heard, heard it here first. Come visit Farmer Mike at the Atwater Village Farmer's Market. Okay, guys, uh, we are Plant-Based Riots, uh, a weekly commutable-length, evidence-based call-to-action conversation about living a healthy and disease-free life. Follow us on Instagram at the Plant-Based Riot. Visit the all-new Plant-Based Riot Facebook page. Thank you, Dr. Brian. Uh, we are also available on YouTube at the Plant-Based Riot. This is going to be our first uh, episode that we're putting up on uh, YouTube here, guys. So... Uh, you guys can play along uh, in the background on YouTube if you don't want to listen to it on podcast or SoundCloud or wherever you may get your podcasts. Uh, my name is Dan. I'm a three-year vegan husband, father of three fantastic, uh, three fantastic energetic plant-based uh, powered kiddos. Over I'm here. Mike. I'm a plant scientist, vegetable vendor, market gardener. I'm a dad with two boys that are constantly uh, in the garden with me. And uh, my wonderful wife giving me support. I'm Brian. I'm a metabolic scientist. I also have three wonderful, energetic little kids and a wonderful wife that helps me manage them and wrangle them. Uh, I have been rocking with my guac out for the last 24 years and uh, just trying to live the plant-based lifestyle. You got the best ones. What was the other one? You had the egg, egg, eggplant murder? Yeah, like just... They just <laughs> they just come to me in like out of body vision out of body vision so I love it nice that's fantastic insane for romaine I think that was the other one <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> he's insane got romaine uh, Mike throwing this your way why are we avoiding soy in this country well you know marketing I would say is why we're avoiding soy there's no real good reason why in my opinion. But um, there's a number of reasons why, um, for marketing purposes, why uh, people are avoiding soy. Um, so I would say number one is because of GMOs. Um, soybeans have gotten a bad name because of GMOs. Um, and uh, fears about what that is. What am I eating? What kind of chemicals am I putting in to my food? Um, so, you know, peel back the layers. Uh, and go back in time before soybeans were kind of prostitutionalized by the United States. Uh, go back to ancient China, you know, in ancient farming methods of using this, this very useful bean plant. And you'll find that it's, it's really quite wonderful. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so the other thing is that soy has kind of in the last 20, 30 years, kind of gotten a, a really good uh, grade as being like a wonderful, healthy plant. And then un recently, the FDA is, is kind of reconsidering the effects that soy has on health. So, I mean, I think it was like 1999 uh, is when soy really kind of hit the market and the FDA said, hey, this is a healthy healthy food uh, you should eat soy put soy in your diet uh, it has all these um, wonderful impacts on health it helps reverse like cardiovascular disease arterial disease um, it helps fight, so, fight obesity and things like that and during this time once the food industry got word of this they just as Mike said they really prostitutionalized this this bean and within the first three years of that statement being said that soy is a healthy product um, the food industry basically created like nearly 3,000 new novel soy foods, soy based foods based upon the FDA's claim. So the food industry got this claim and they just said, okay, we're going to make everything with soy in it. And they oversaturated the market with soy. And now the FDA is re is reexamining their statement that they made in 1999. And they're, they're trying to basically take those claims away saying that soy might not be as healthy as we once thought. And it's, it's, but originally they were saying soy in its natural state, and now they're now they're going back because it's in a de-dangered state now. We really don't Something see happened. it in its natural state anymore. I mean, it's Mike can, can you if know confirm cook, this. I mean, if you're a cook and you're in the kitchen, um, then soybeans are a go-to uh, food source. They're a staple food. But f I I want to say for most Americans, cooking has kind of gone by the by the wayside. But it is it is rebounding these days. I think, but. Um, you know, for the decades past, uh, I think 
most Americans uh, have not really been in the kitchen. And so when they hear about soy, they're like, maybe it's good. How can I easily get this into my body? And there's a, there's a wide array of processed foods in the middle of the store where I can just grab, you know, all kinds of, all kinds of different novel foods that, that have soy products Filler. in them. If, if they're good for me, then why don't I just have all these different treats? You know, that's the easiest thing for most Americans to do. But go back to basics, soybeans uh, and cooking with them, that, that's possibly the most daunting part for Americans. Just cooking in general. Just cooking in general, yeah. yeah. But, you know, what's, what's a little confusing is if we look at these FDA claims and now that they're kind of revoking what they said in the late 90s, you know, soy, something that is an absolute staple in nutrition and understanding soy is that soy is very high in fibers very high in vitamins, very high in minerals, very low in saturated fat. Um, and natural soy products contain very high protein levels, very, a lot of amino acids in there. So this could be another example of how politics change the American diet. Right? Absolutely. So, so who knows what's driving this this alteration in, in how we look at soy, right? Um, and it just shows that like, you know, when it comes to capitalism and making money, I mean, man exploits nature, right? I mean, we Absolutely. say, okay, soy is good. Everybody eat it. Now soy is bad. Don't eat it. And through manipulating, um, you know, nature, we're also changing the American diet because if we're making these claims saying, don't eat this, eat this, eat more of this, then that's ultimately going to have an impact on our health. So, yes. um, you know, let's let's really get into the soy topic today and, and see if we can kind of unveil, um, you know, a lot of the misconceptions around soy. So let me get, let me give a little bit of a background on soy. So um, from my experience in plant families, I know soybeans are in the Fabaceae family or the legume family. Legume refers to all beans or peas beans these are all kind of interchangeable um soybeans are native to china they're one of the oldest of all agricultural crops they've been consumed for the last three thousand years this is this is a a crop that um civilization was built on right um i think that um when you look at the origins of soybeans these are um, these are this is a vegetable that is so important um, for farmers for a number of reasons. It's the most sustainable way to get protein. Bean plants are so important. So soybeans, you know, for Asia, agricultural agriculturalists in Asia, the soybean is what built civilization. Um, so when, when I refer to soybeans. I'm referring to the importance of uh, how beans can nourish the soil. So soybeans and all beans have this ability to fix nitrogen in the soil. And so when you, when you grow a bean plant, you can either use it for food or you can use it to increase the fertility of soil. And when you do that, um, basically there's bacteria in the root system of the bean that pulls nitrogen from the air, puts it into the root, and you can use that to pump up the protein content of the bean. This is why beans have so much protein. Um, or you can let that bean stay in the soil and release that nitrogen into the soil to grow something else. And that's a rotational crop? Is that what that's referred yeah, to? Yeah, or a cover crop. cover crop. So as a farmer, especially an ancient farmer, the bean is the most important vegetable ever if you don't have beans there's just no way we have civilization there's no way we have our modern society um we can't exist without it so farmers know this yes so like understanding how to use beans to nourish the soil to obtain more nitrogen so the more nitrogen the healthier the soil it's like a cultural achievement absolutely okay if you want to talk about an organic way to nourish the soil, this is it, folks. This is the one. 
So are the the major agricultural businesses that are producing massive amounts of soybeans are they using this process are they are they making cover crops out of soybeans to grow healthier soybeans that we're using for um, factory farming and that we're using for uh, you know soy byproducts that we're putting in every food that we're making in the United States you know I'd say in the United States uh, soybeans are widely used as a cover crop uh -huh. however they're also they're primarily used as uh, animal feed these mm. days, mm. but you know, in the since the Green Revolution, uh, I would say Americans specifically, and in first first world nations, were reliant more on on uh, chemical fertilization. But um, the soybean, in and of itself, doesn't really rely too much on fertilizer. It kind of is of itself, you know. Um, soybeans and all beans they don't like to be fertilized this is why this is why beans are so easy to grow mm. you know like you see um you see uh kindergartners growing bean plants in the window of their class yeah. like anybody can grow a bean yeah you and know it's... like when people say i want to start a garden what should i grow grow beans that's like the easiest thing you could ever grow it's it's foolproof and now beans are under attack thanks to the plant paradox and the lectin scare where these things that nature grows naturally and effortlessly are under attack. Yeah. And it kind of goes against the evolution of agriculture that it does. We've, we've experienced since the dawn of man, right? The, the bean is the most important vegetable yeah. ever. Yeah. Um, wow. And I don't say that lightly. It's, there's a reason why it's so important. You know, it's, it's this humble bean plant. It, it has given us so much. <laughs> Respect the bean. Yes, let's not bite the hand that feeds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> seriously. Yeah. Another, yeah. <clears throat> That's good. Well, that. So then, how is soy made? Like, I, I, you you talked a little bit about process and history there, but how okay. is soy made? Like, what is what is soy? Soy as a food. Yes. So, are you talking about like tofu and tempeh and I don't byproducts know. of soy? Or I don't know. I guess like I'm just like because. So, I don't know. So soy is the bean, yeah. and and we refer to eating. I maybe guess like tofu or yeah. other soy products that are good for you and then what are soy products that are not good for okay, you so like then, where is it so then we're talking about like minimally denatured soy beans that we use as other products yes okay so traditional ways yeah, of cooking that, okay. so, so like you know yeah. it's funny mike said something about the second graders and you know one of the products that we get from soy beans is of course tofu right and you know tofu so when we're talking about like foods that we should be eating that are soy based the most important thing is we want minimally denatured okay. products right so we call this first generation soy products and that would be something like tofu and tempeh and your big miso one miso paste. because why what does miso have that we you vegans have very B12. right so fermented beans um you know so let's talk about tofu um tofu is very easy to make it's water soybeans blender right second grader can make it as dan as, as uh mike said second yes. graders can grow beans and they can make tofu blocks so you take you take the beans you put them in water you blend it you remove that uh paste put it into some cheesecloth add a little bit of salt pepper olive oil and a little bit of lemon you add that together with the cheesecloth and you basically make this block and it curds it makes this like curd curdy sort of block and then you have soybeans that have been minimally denatured right okay and it's so funny because that's something as mike said a second grader could make but if you look at something like you know high fructose corn syrup that we create as a sugar that's something that chemists have to make right so that's something that's incredibly denatured and made in in a laboratory where a right. soybean block is is very or tofu block is very minimal changing of that bean right you're just adding a couple of things such as water soy or oil and you're not removing anything right you're not you're not using chemical extraction to take specific things out i see okay and uh, then second generation is that's what you refer to as the yeah so the second generation is the things like where you have isolated soy protein and isolated soy products um which generally requires a laboratory to do so like these chemical extractions um so you know a, a lot of 
isolated soy proteins are used in throughout the entire food industry. So um, if you were to have, um, and they're usually non-nutritive additives such as fillers. So when you start to denature soy and you have to use chemical extraction to get at these um, proteins in soy to be used as fillers, uh, we see that in things like Cheetos and Lucky Charms and Pop-Tarts and... Um, hot pockets, you know, these things have all these soy fillers in there that, you know, basically expand the volume of the food and save the food producer money, right? So if you're making a hot pocket and you have like, uh, you know, uh, eight ounces of Italian sausage that you want to put in that hot pocket, an easy way to get 12 ounces of Italian sausage is to mix that with soy filler, right? So it's mixed so, into the meat yeah, absolutely. as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, uh, meatless burgers are a lot of, you know, so people that are eating like the veggie burgers are, you know, that's a lot of the isolated soy properties that they use oh. to make, you know, so you don't, not too often do you go to a restaurant and see a veggie burger that has like chunks of whole soybeans in it, right? So um, isolated soy protein is another one because when you, when you chemically extract um, the protein, it gives the the consistency of like meat, like a very chewy, rubbery um, mouthfeel. Interesting. So okay. like if you look at um, isolated soy protein, it, it looks like bacon bits, right? Like it's hard, it's crunchy. You add a little bit of water to it and then it turns into like a spongy, rubbery, meaty texture. So, um, you know, so the take the takeaway is, you know, if you're going to eat the soy products and the soybeans, in a minimally denatured form, try to go for those first generation um, products, which would be miso, um, tofu, and tempeh. Well, that's good. Is there a scale of like what has what is more and what is less of the? Uh, is it would it be denatured? Is there is there a yeah, range of well, that? Or a, I mean, a chart or something like that that shows like different levels of. Later, we can get into different levels of isoflavins that. Um, appear when you denatured soy and you um, you know use chemical processes to alter it. We can talk about that in a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean the safest way. I mean the the, the pitfalls to avoid is, is one is how do we avoid the GMO thing with soy? And Mike, I mean there's at this point there's really no way to avoid that in the right. United States. Ninety five percent of soybeans in the U.S. are GMO genetically modified organisms. So what does that really mean? It means that, um, so for soybeans, they're ready Roundup soybeans. Uh, recombinant DNA has been put into the soybean so that when grown, uh, it can be sprayed with the herbicide glyphosate, known as Roundup, um, and uh, it won't kill the plant. It'll kill weeds growing nearby the soybean plant. So um, it's... It's something that um, a lot of people should be concerned about. And uh, so when you have genetically modified soybeans, not only is there the possibility that, of that being unsafe, because it hasn't really been tested, but um, you're going to have a lot of glyphosate residue um, when you're eating soybean uh, plants that have been sprayed. So... I think that's a legitimate reason to avoid soy if it's not organic or if it's not um, grown in a natural way. So, you know, if that's the reason why you're avoiding soy, that makes sense. However, what about organic heirloom soybeans before we... So it's not GMO. Not GMO. What about, you know, going back to basics, you know... Um, Forget about what we've done to the soybean plant to make it something that is horrifying. Go back in time, back before America ruined the soybean and called it, you know, evil. Um, and if you find, if you find uh, people in ancient China um, living off of this very important crop, you'll see it's. It's a wonderful thing. And these are the people that are living to 116 years old, right? Yeah, now. most of the blue zone, right? Yeah. Exactly. You know, um, what's that? Uh, there was, there's a woman currently, uh, the oldest woman right, li yes. living in the U.S., 116 years old. She's eating, she's eating probably tofu. She's probably eating um, 
some some form of minimally processed soybean. You know, uh, people in blue zones are eating a cup of beans a day. So this this includes soybeans and many other types of beans. And they're probably using the beans as cover crops to grow all their other plants. They right? are. In the blue zones, right? Right. So, um, you know, as Dan was saying, how do we, how do we, how do we undo the GMO thing? Because if you want the best case of how food is politics and food is political power, if 95% of the soybeans are GMO, who owns that? Who owns that? So who, who, who owns 95% of the soybeans that are genetically mon modified and have Roundup? So I don't want to say the name of the company. We all know who it is. Yeah. It starts with an M. It's the elephant in the room. <laughs> and it rhymes with... But you know, <laughs> I don't... Like, over time I've learned... I've learned to not necessarily blame a particular company. What, I, what I'm more interested in, in figuring out is, like, why? Why are we in the current state that we're in? Um, like, why, is, why are certain companies rising to the occasion to give us these these products you know um and i've i've realized that because 95 percent of people in america are not farmers this is why 95 percent of our of our soybeans are gmo you know so it's compensating for the lack of farming and that's funny because the on, people. on the medical side 95 percent of the people don't know what they're eating or why they're eating so we're in this pickle per se because we've just we've just abandoned agriculture and nutrition we're letting other people take care of that and then right. when we get sick we don't get to the root of the cause we let the pharmaceutical companies come in and take care of that right so we can go focus on more important things like so you think you can dance and americans got talent right like <laughs> those shows right we've completely like disconnected from these things in our lives and here we are now we have uh you know food that has recombinant DNA in it and you know we have diseases coming up that right. 20 years ago never existed right if this if these kinds of things make you angry then ask yourselves why why did we get why did we get here and uh, if if enough people cared about their food and decided to be a part of the solution then we wouldn't have to worry about these kinds of things you know we we are we are all inherently contributing sure to the perpetuation of ignorance right some of these huge corporations that are ruling the world we are, we are giving them power by by inaction yeah you know yeah. so so Brian to your point a second ago can can you actually get can you get cancer can you get hormone and thyroid issues um, by eating soy or by eating uh, denatured soy? Like I've I've heard of these I've heard of these, okay. uh, yeah, these scary so these conditions that that come about from eating soy. Um, right, right. So um, let just kind of make a blanket statement first, and then um, we can kind of get into some of the more specifics. Um, it is still entirely unclear if soy induces cancer or induces thyroid issues or induces uh, any other kind of chronic disease. Even um, in its natural state or denatured state? Well, and that's just the problem is most studies that have been conducted don't really look at the natural versus denatured state. Because right? it's two separate things. Well, it's, it's too complex, right? I mean, we've, we have turned soy and soy products into such a unrecognizable thing that it's really hard to study all the manipulations of soy that we've created. Like I said, in 1999, over the course of like four or five years since the FDA made that claim, nearly 3,000 soy products came out, right? And that's, how, how do you test all of those independently and try to get some sort of like answer of what soy is doing to the body? So there is a lot of conflicting evidence out there on soy research that says that soy is good for you, soy is not good for you. So whenever we have a lot of conflicting evidence and things can't be replicated, we just scratch our head and say, okay, we still don't know. We have these good studies that show this, this, and this, 
Um, right, but read, you might read like soy causes cancer right, at a, on a headline. You might think, oh, that's scary. But then, would you ever see eating beans causes cancer? Right. No. What is, What does that even like? How can that be true? So let's 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 you know that's crazy. Let's kind of like break this down a little bit and let's let's think rationally and critically for a second. Mike had said that ninety five percent of soybeans are GMO. And they can say they contain something called Roundup, right? right? Also known as glyphosate. Okay, glyphosate itself. What does that do to? I know, like caterpillars and butterflies and insects. What does it do to those things that try to eat the plant? Well, you know, glyphosate, uh, as far as I know, isn't isn't harmful to insects. Uh huh. The that's no um, the ones that 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 harm insects are known as BT. And are those in soybeans? You know. They might be, but um, I, I usually refer to BT as being in corn okay, because of the yep. corn earworm eating corn. But yep. the, the whole point of glyphosate is, uh, is about weed control. Okay. Um, but um, as far as the effects of glyphosate... There, there is an effect that it has. Yes. And what um, is that? That's an endocrine disruptor. Disruptor. And what is, what is endocrine? So your endocrine system is, is basically your biochemical signaling, right? So everything that you do throughout your day relies on chemical signals, right? Okay. If you want a muscle to contract, right. if you want to reach for a can of beans in the cabinet, biochemical signals have to have to tell the body to do that. So when you have disruption of the endocrine system and those signals are being basically cut off, then you start to run into to problems, right? So glyphosate is an endocrine disruptor. So is it potentially soy? that is inducing some type of uh, illness or is it the consumption of glyphosate that is right. producing that's more than just soy right right and and if you know if we look at how much soy we consumed we consume throughout the day whether we know it or not because it's in so many other foods so many other fillers are right. we getting complications from over ingestion of that endocrine disruptor or is it from the bean itself and i don't think we've really a asked this question right a lot right. of people will, are afraid of soybeans because they say it has phytoestrogen which is like supposedly something that will give you man boobs or you know you know men i would say men in particular are scared of it women say it may cause breast cancer but you know when we talk about um glyphosate as an endocrine disruptor that that is going to mess with your hormones worse more so than the so-called phytoestrogen with it, which is in beans um all beans all beans contain phytoestrogen black beans yes black beans actually have more phytoestrogen than soybeans do so you know when you say oh i don't want to eat soybeans because they have this, these estrogens um yet black beans are supposedly so great for you right they, but they're not oh, under attack right no, all beans have these phytoestrogens, and they're really not something to be afraid of, um, unless you're eating beans in a very highly processed, chemically extracted way. Because why? Why is that? Because um, if you're going to take certain specific proteins out of a bean and put that into a processed food, such as like a protein shake. Um, then you're going to be eating a highly refined form of of the bean and that's possibly how you could run into having too much of something within the plant like a phytoestrogen but, but in its traditional state in a traditional sense yeah if you have the fiber uh, still there um and it's in a minimally processed way there's nothing to worry about as far as phytoestrogen okay yeah um glyphosate is 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 the bad one and, that you need to worry about. And let's clear the air a little bit with the, the phytoestrogen because that's the question I get all the time is uh, when I'm doing consulting with people. It's like, well, I don't eat soy because it has estrogen. It doesn't have estrogen. It has soy isoflavins, which is a phytoestrogen. And the two compounds, estrogen and phytoestrogen, they resemble one another physically. They have very similar physical properties. So what that means is that the phytoestrogen can bind to the same receptor as natural estrogen. 
right? Okay. So when you want estrogen to have its its impact, it has to bind to a receptor that uh, is specifically designed for estrogen to communicate with the cell. Okay, so when we have phytoestrogens, we have these compounds that resemble estrogen, but they have a much weaker impact on what it tells the cell to do when it binds to the receptor. So they're not the same. And the the soy isoflavins or the phytoestrogens, and there's two of them that are kind of under attack the most and that's um genistein and daidzine those are the two yes those are the two phytoestrogens um so those are the ones that are constantly being uh attacked um so the studies that look at these isoflavins or these soy isoflavins you know we have to take into account that anything that is an estrogen there's a lot of things that we have to consider when we're doing research on it and that's the ethnicity of people and the hormone levels of people at certain ages because as we age as we get older in chronological age estrogen levels increase or decrease and especially if you're a man or a woman we have to we have to consider uh the sex or the gender as well because these things have different uh they react differently in the body um so you know the way these isoflavins interact with the body is through something called estrogen receptor alpha or estrogen receptor beta. And from most of the studies that I've read, when isoflavins bind to the estrogen receptor, and it seems like estrogen receptor B is the one that everyone's looking at, they have uh, anti-carcinogenic effects. So this gets the the water gets muddier because when we look at where estrogen receptors are in the body, they're spread out in the body differently between men and women, right? There's different locations of estrogen receptors. Um, you know, they're in the uterus, they're in breast cancer cells. So that's where a lot of people make that association where you know soy can cause breast cancer or soy can reduce breast cancer because these receptors are in those cells. They're in the hypothalamus. Um, they're in efferent ducts, which are uh, the testicles. So we have estrogen receptors in, in, in the testicles. Um, they're in the kidney, the brain, the heart, the lungs, the intestines, the prostate, right? So that's why a lot of people look at prostate cancer and soy because these receptors are located there. So they're, they're spread out through the body. Um, and we all, everyone at this table has different ratios of alpha and beta in their body, right? So Mike, you might have just genetically more beta receptors than Dan does. Dan might have more alpha receptors, which means soy isoflavins are going to respond differently in your body than in Dan's body. So, so it, it, the, the waters get really, really muddy with the research. Um, but uh, one study that was done by uh, my mentor at the University of Illinois, one of my mentors, um, Abir Mohammed, she's a MD and PhD. She's basically showed me everything that I knew um, throughout my PhD. Um, she did some research on genistein and she did it in prostate cancer cells. They basically looked at three different cell lines and they saw how genistein either increased or decreased metastasis of prostate cancer. And they found that the more genistein that you had, the more upregulation of estrogen receptor beta receptors became present. And the more of these, these receptors that were upregulated through the consumption of soy reduced cancer metastasis. Wow. So there was this inverse correl there was this inverse relationship between cancer and estrogen receptor beta beta where if the cancer was uh the cancer levels were higher those receptors were lower. Wow. So she saw that the more soy that you ate the more upregulation of these receptors the decrease in markers of cancer. So wow. yeah, so to so me, to me it seems like you know if you're eating soybeans in their tradi traditional ways, tofu, miso, tempeh, then you're going to you're going to reap the, these benefits. Um, so let's let's be clear here. You know, if I'm eating a protein shake with soy proteins in it, I'm probably not going to realize those benefits that Brian just said. Yeah. So, you know, like let's use the analogy of the coca plant. Okay. So the coca plant native to South America is um, a traditional food, right? But once you 
chemically extract cocaine from the coca plant, all of a sudden you have a pharmaceutical drug that's highly addictive and can kill you. Um, the difference between medicine and poison is the dose. So, you know, if you, if you isolate and extract certain chemicals from plants, you can very easily poison yourself. And this can this can be for any plant. And that's kind of what your the analogy is. That's what's happening with soy. That's right what's now. happening with soybeans. Yeah. Yeah. It's... If you eat soybeans in their natural, heirloom, organic, fermented, sprouted, cooked state, then it's it's so good for you. Um, but if you are isolating certain things and removing it, you know, like a study says soybeans are good for you. So let's take something specific out of the soybean plant because we believe that's what's so good for you. That's that's where it falls apart. And that's where you run into harming yourself. So it doesn't work if you try to isolate things from a plant. It only works if you have it in its natural state. And that's what we see in our freezer section, right? I mean, Dan, you know, you're kind of still figuring your way out through this vegan yeah, lifestyle, right? Totally. It's been three years and totally. you're, you're, you're ahead of the curve because you do your own research. But, you know, when you go through the, you know, the freezer section at Whole Foods and you see all these like vegan, vegetarian alternatives. That... I, we're not, I, I don't know if I can always afford to shop at Whole Foods okay. once a year. Maybe yeah. that's where I'm at once a year. So, yeah, when you go to these, well, okay, Ralph Servans, sure, right? They're all carry, they're all jumping on the bandwagon yeah, yeah, right yeah. now. Yeah. You go through the freezer section and there's all these meat alternatives in there. Those are things that are denatured, overly processed, dehydrated, right? They they've taken the natural soybean and they've altered it and when they do this they alter that isoflavin or that phytoestrogen content okay right so um so that's something that our listeners be need to be aware of as well is if you're you know you're trying to figure out your way through this vegan vegetarian thing um the more denatured if you're if you're fearful of those isoflavins and those phytoestrogens that you have to be aware that when they process the soybean it changes the content so i have uh i got a graph here that shows um how genistein and uh dadezine the two isoflavins that most research have been conducted on how they're altered or, or, or what their content is in food products so if we look at um and I'll just give you guys the total isoflavin count just to make this easier on you. If we look at a soybean, edamame, the total isoflavin count is 49 milligrams per 100 grams. Okay, so just remember the number 49. When we denatured soy and we make something like um, soy protein isolate, which is in a lot of the protein shakes, a lot of the energy bars, a lot of your texturized soy protein. As not, a filler? That's, as a filler, okay. right? Well, or just as a protein source, right? Okay. You're, you're removing everything from the bean and just extracting the protein, right? Which sounds like a good idea. It does sound like a good idea, but now you go from a 49 total isoflavin count to a 92 isoflavin count. So now... Doubling it. Just, you're doubling it just by denaturing it, right? So you're, And that's bad. Well, if you're worried about you know, the endocrine disruption and you're worried about the phytoestrogen, phytoestrogen levels, then yeah, this is something you need, to, you need to be aware of. Uh, if you want something like soy-based bacon bits, right? Because there's a lot of soy I bacon. I remember those. Yeah. So now you're going from 49, which is the natural bean, to something that is 119 milligrams per 100 grams. So now you're... you're it's super potent. You're potent. super potent, right. Notice that the bacon bits, they don't have water... Oh, well, they have yeah, a very low like, water content, right? So it's super it's dry, almost crunchy. Like it's a soy protein that has been extracted from the bean, and then it's put into a dry food product that is, you know, highly processed. Right. So, um, wow. and then, like I said, it's everywhere. Even Kashi cereal, right? The big, the big uh, healthy cereal brand that's trying to deliver these. And it's funny because my wife brought home some Kashi cereal, and I was just like, "Why is this here?" They're making cereal now that uh, is out of uh, chickpeas, but it was like this cocoa chickpea cereal, and I, I had a few of them, and it was like eating chocolate cookies. I'm like, okay, so yeah, it has a it has a chickpea base, but now it has all this chocolate and sugar around there. It's like frosted, right? So you don't ever eat anything that's frosted because that's just sugar, sugar right? Um, so why did they put chickpea in there? It's right. because people are scared of soybeans. 
or chickpea right. is like this hot a chickpea new thing. is yeah. also a bean. A bean, which right, Much probably like has soybean. estrogen, right? So like people are just like, you know, replacing the soybean with another bean just because people don't know right. about other beans. And it's funny because <laughs> it's just like it's just like the fast food companies, right? Like if you think like in the vegan world, the number one evil corporation is what is at the top of the corporation scale like what is the worst food food you can eat you guys sure mickey d's mickey d's right mickey d's isn't any different than (laughs) mcdonald's or wendy's or arby's but but for some reason it takes the full impact right 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 right? so like the brunt of it yeah yeah, and 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 when we get into the 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 bean world it's the same thing there's this hierarchy of like shitty beans right and soy (laughs) takes takes the biggest hit um but you know kashi has um 17.4 17.4 milligrams per every 100 grams. So, um, you know, raw tofu, if you were to eat raw tofu, just a regular cube, it has 23. So very little isoflavin content, right? And you guys can find this online. You just need to be aware of it that, you know, when you when you alter this product, you can potentially increase or decrease. You know, if we talk about soy milk, soy milk is 90% water, right? So right. you probably have even less isoflavin counts or, or, or quantity in in soy milk. But you and, know that the story about the guy with the man boobs. Yeah, he's there. There's a story about this guy who, he's you know, he's more than middle aged. Wait, I'm kind. Of, should I? I'm kind of worried about the man boob situation. Is this a-, <laughs> a lot of men are worried about this, but really, if you get down to it, it's it's a little concern. First, the the story about the guy with the man boobs. He was an old man. First of all, so when you're older, you're producing less testosterone. And then also this guy, he's drinking soy milk. Like he's drinking like a gallon of soy milk a day. What yeah. Was it? He, so he's 60 years old, right? I mean, at 60, year, 60 years of age, everybody at this table is going to have man boobs, right? It's just, it just happens, uh, right? Inactivity, sedentary no, lifestyle. Like, if, you're gonna be, <laughs> if you're staying on the couch yeah. eating yeah. breakfast cereal for three meals a day with your soy milk, then... Sure, you're going to get man boobs. And, and but I mean, if, do you really think that that's not going to happen if you're just going to do that? And I mean, this, come on. You know, and this this man boob incident was published in, I think, in like Men's Health or something. One a while ago. Mainstream publication. And, and as we talked about in a previous episode, human beings are creating this new pandemic of fear, right? Because sure. we have access to all these different social medias, all these different, you know, devices where we can publish things. Um, Pause on. Um, sorry, 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 sorry. There, you know, there is no um, scientific evidence that supported this whatsoever, right? Um, and he had, I believe, he was drinking three fourths of a gallon per day of soy milk. Who does that? Well, somebody that's replacing their water consumption with soy soy milk, right? Yeah. And what I thought was interesting about this is I don't I don't know too many people from that generation that is jumping on the soy milk bandwagon, right? Cuz if you you're you're at age 60 and you're like, "Oh yeah, I'm drinking soy milk." They're going to be like, "What the hell's wrong with you? You drink regular milk, right?" <laughs> There's that like, too. Yeah, 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 I mean, and, and on that note, what drives me absolutely nuts with these anti-soybean people is most of them are probably I don't know, Mike, maybe you can you can you know, tell me if this is accurate or not. Most of them are probably drinking regular milk or goat milk or mm. what is that raw goat milk? That's the thing. Like that's yeah, that's a thing now. Okay, so so you're worried about a phytoestrogen. You're worried about something that is a weak estrogen, but you're drinking the lactation product from another animal that is pr- was pregnant. Right, a female. Female that is a lot of estrogen. producing a ton of estrogen and putting it right into that milk. This is, this is not a phytoestrogen. Yeah, the real this, estrogen. This is the, a real right. mammalian estrogen and from, this, coming from the mammary gland. You know, and this is where people <laughs> people are like, oh yeah, you know, it's it's the antibiotics or it's the it's the uh, steroids in the food that's cre- you know my daughter's creating you know getting large breasts at age fourteen. It's probably some of the milk and the cheese and the cream cheese and the yogurt and the things that have mammalian estrogen in it that is causing your young daughter to develop prematurely right and people don't realize that they don't put that together you're worried about a plant estrogen when you should be worried about these highly reactive estrogens in the product that can activate these receptors in our body right from dairy milk so i'm just i have to put that out there so you're saying i shouldn't be worried about the soy milk i should be worried about not going to the gym 
at sixty? Are we talking about man boobs still? <laughs> no, you should always go to the gym. Okay, that okay, should okay, always okay. be a, that should right. always be a or part of. Or be in the a, garden. Or be yeah. in the garden. There you go. All right. Um, I mean, if you want to talk about meat for a second, um, the, you know the reason why we have the luxury in America to have so much meat and animal products is because of soybeans, right? So, I don't follow you. You might you might think that um, I'm gonna avoid soybeans because. You know, they're going to give me man boobs or the phytoestrogens or because, you know, the GMO element. But, you know, the cheapest, uh, most abundant source of protein to feed animals is from soybeans. So um, whether you're talking about poultry, beef, pork, and even fish, um, all of them are given soybeans because that's the cheapest way to give them protein. So even if, you know, I would say even if you're trying to eat organically, um, these, these, all these animals are going to be eating beans because that's, that's the only real affordable, sustainable way to give food to an animal. Even organic, even organic meat would contain soy? You know, like, soy? I, I guess say, that's different, right? I would say, I mean, there is organic soy, um, but, you know, going back to what are you really eating? You know, like if you're giving beans to an animal then you eat the animal, you're kind of eating concentrated beans. Right? That's, that's what, what, that's that's what, what meat is. That's what dairy is. That's what... That's all they eat from... from whatever the animal eats. When they're born to when they're slaughtered, right? It's, it's in a concentrated soy and corn diet. They don't get... That's right. There's no diversity in their food. That's right. Right? So it's that three times a day, maybe four times a day. I don't know what how often they feed. But that is all they are eating through their entire lifespan. Is soy we, and corn. We can briefly introduce lectin. Briefly. So, yes. you know, like a lot of people are, are, are avoiding beans in general because they are scared of lectins because certain doctors have been mentioning it. But um, think about lectin. Like when you eat cooked beans, you're not really getting lectin. Wait, and what is lectin? Real quick, that's the... Lectin is a is a is an anti-nutrient. That's, that's protecting, inside the bean. It's inside the bean. It protects beans so that insects don't eat them. Right? So... That's raw. That's a raw bean. Right. But who eats raw beans? Nobody. The animals. <laughs> okay, you're, you're right. Uh... People, people, people don't eat raw beans, but we feed, our, we feed farm animals raw beans. Um, right, you don't see anybody out there cooking bean, a pot yeah. of beans for the cows, right? Yeah, they, there would be no profit in the, the meat industry if we, right. you know, we, uh, so we you can't, you blend can't it give, up. Yeah. I see. You wouldn't give raw beans to a person, but... It's common to give raw beans to farm animals. And that lectin is bad for you if you eat it raw like that? or Right. So when you cook beans, you remove, you, you denature the lectin content okay. by like 95 or more percent. I see. When you have raw beans, you've got a lot of lectin in there. And when an animal eats those raw beans, it's meat and it's milk has a lot of lectin. Yes, so it if stores you're, it. If you're, whether it's organic or conventional, if you're eating a lot of animal products... You're gonna get a lot of lectin. Yep. So we need to, We should do an episode on this, by the way. Yeah, it's coming. So uh, we're gonna do that within the the very near future. Great. Um, you know, and, and something else that I I think we need to touch upon is we've created this soy problem, right? I mean, like we've we've genetically modified it, and now we've created this system that. You know, it has meat in the foreground. We got to produce meat. This is a meat eating country. And what do we feed all these animals to inexpensively feed them and get the most profit possible? We feed them soybeans, soybeans, right? Or some other beans. GMO. Soy. So now yeah. it is, and is it safe to say that like the entire Midwest is mostly soybeans crops and corn? Okay. So, right. Yeah. So now the food industry and the meat producing industry has this overabundance of soy products, right? And we're using, as I said earlier, we're using them as fillers. So up to 60% of processed food contains soy fillers. Wow. Right? So everything you eat that is in a wrapper and that you buy on a grocery shelf and has a nutritional uh, facts label on the back has some type of soy filler. Okay? And it could be up to 60% of it. Um, you know, texturized soy protein, that's in 50 to 70% of processed foods. Um, soy enriched flour is in energy bars, in sports drinks, in infant formulas, in cereals, granola bars, imitation dairy products, ice cream, cheese, and even donuts have these um, soy. Donuts? Soy yeah. 
Fuck. Um, <laughs> you know, most of the breakfast and lunch programs at schools have predominantly soy based meals as fillers, right? Because like I said, it's a really cheap way to take something and make more of it. And also, this is what confuses me about what we talked about earlier of why the FDA is re revoking their claim on this being the healthy, healthy product is a lot of people use the soy filler because it's the healthiest choice as a filler. If you add soy to, let's say, ground beef, you're not going to change the fat content of the ground beef. You're going to actually reduce it a little bit because you're diluting the, the ground beef with a soy filler, right? Um, if you add soy to, um, let's say, some like egg product that you can microwave, right? Like some Jimmy Dean thing. You're not going to increase the cholesterol by adding a soy product because soy is so neutral and so healthy, right? So you could put something in there like a filler, like let's say, let's put more cheese in there, but then you're going to increase the cholesterol content and you have to label that on the back of the label, right? And that might scare shoppers away. So people are, we're using this soy product as a filler because we have an abundance of it and because it's a healthy additive, right? So now the yeah. big picture, are we getting moobs from eating soy? Are we getting cancer from eating soy? Are we getting endocrine disruption from eating soy possibly because it's in everything right it's in the meat it's in it's in the it's a filler in all these products so maybe we're over consuming soy on a daily basis and that's having a negative impact and and is it the soy bean or is it the genetically modified soybean that could That's been be highly processed right who knows so, so when, you, when you have people say soy is good or soy is bad like that that's some that's an argument that can only really work in a society where almost nobody is cooking in the kitchen. You know, like a farmer, like like follow a farmer who's growing soybeans because it works, it's nutritious. Are you gonna tell a farmer this is bad for you? That doesn't make any sense to a farmer, but to an American who doesn't cook their food, doesn't grow their food, that's that's an argument that will sway someone. So it's just crazy to think that, um, fake news. Yes, exactly. You can't really tell, you can't tell someone who's cooking at home and gar and growing their own food that a vegetable is bad for them. That doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> that only, that only works if you're talking to someone who has no idea what they're eating and how it was grown. So, so it, there's this there's this assumption when you say soy is bad there's this assumption that you that one you don't cook and two you don't farm so then do you get that yeah, it's like you don't cook and you don't farm yeah because they're assuming that you're going to be eating processed soy uh, right right that's that's the assumption they're not thinking for a moment that you're sprouting it yourself that you're fermenting it that you're cooking it in its traditional way they're not talking about that they're talking about processed soy that's in the breakfast aisle yeah. and that's not a balanced no diet that, approach that, either right no not at all that's that's what you need to avoid right because as we've seen when you denature the product you also if you're worried about those phytochemical or phytoestrogens uh, you're altering the isoflavin estrogen content the balance right? is different right? right so i mean we saw in the soy bean it's very low but once you start to manipulate that you increase it Right, so we're creating a Frankenstein here, yeah. which is detrimental to yeah. our health. So you know, right? You know, and that's interesting. Is you you talk to a farmer, and it's like, okay, well, I use soybeans as a cover crop. I feed my animals with the beans and the the plants that we grow from the cover crop, and you're going to tell me that this this soybean is bad and it's going to make me sick, and you know, it's really it's yeah. How how can you convince a farmer of that? And that's a that's there's no a, way you can. That's a first world problem. Well, <laughs> even, take it to your market. How do you convince? How do you now convince future uh, shoppers at your farmers market that your your soy sprouts are a good thing? Right, so, so how do we how do we so for your about, market? How do we undo this? If you were to bring a product to your market and say, okay, the plant based riot, we we figured out how to undo this soy debacle. Okay, here's so. what we've done to change your. So get this, uh, ancient Chinese heirloom organic soybean, right? Okay. Sprout, um, sprout that 
ancient traditional bean. Uh, put it in a stir fry, cook it up. It's crunchy, it's sweet, it's got lots of fiber, it's got a lot of amino acids that are good for you. So, you know, take away, take away all of the the nonsense that we've done to it. Bring it back to its original state. How do we do that? With somebody owning 95% of the soybeans, buy, how, how do we do that? You know, like, buy, um, start growing soybeans in your, in your vegetable Dude, garden. There you go. Buy some, buy some organic heirloom traditional soybeans. Hold them in your hand. Look at them. These are beans, Hold people. your beans. Hold those, Play with your beans. <laughs> hold those beans in your hand. You know, like, it's so wonderful to, to put your hand into a, into a bag full of beans, right? Satisfying. Take a scoop full of these beans and look at them, feel them. These beans are agriculture. You're holding history in your hands. This is this is magic, right? Plant it. It's easy to grow. Sprout it. Uh, it's yum, it's yummy. It's good for you. Um, how could this be bad? Yes. Right? So that's a bumper sticker. <laughs> so can you grow soybeans in different climates like let's say absolutely I, I'm in the you can grow it inside of your inside of your apartment okay <laughs> so we can undo this we might not be able to do it to the bring it to the commercial grocery store right but we we could we can take soy back we can get it back right own it see don't like, let don't let companies tell you what's good what's bad you know use use your own common sense if you yeah. if you're growing a vegetable how can someone tell you that's bad? It doesn't make any sense. So there's a company out now that's doing a lot with the mung bean. Okay. Okay. So, and I don't know if you know this off the top of your head, but you know, mung bean is a new buzzword in the, the world of nutrition, right? <laughs> okay. So does a mung bean contain phytoestrogen? Absolutely. Does a mung bean... Uh, are we using are they produced with gmo here in the united states do you know that no they're not okay so then that that is automatically a healthier but if this becomes more popular and it gains more momentum it's probably going to go that direction right that's right right yeah. so wow so how do we are you going to are you going to involve yourself in mung beans or are you going to let gmos take the take the lead yeah you know well how about this guys yeah. We're going to do a little dance off here and we, you guys will see it on the video. And okay. We'll have a, we'll, our, our new mascot for the show, the dancing bean. So, <laughs> so you think you can dance. <laughs> so you think. <laughs> anyway, that was I fun. love it. it it's so <laughs> That'll be our mascot. It's so easy. Yeah, yes. <laughs> to grow a bean sprout in soil. In soil. soil. <laughs> soil. Oh my goodness. You can tell it's 5 a.m. Yeah, rough. Um, do you guys have, I know we're, we're going to, this has spawned a, uh, a lectin episode, this conversation yep. here. Do you guys have anything uh, to wrap up in soy here? As uh, I know we're, we're three dads that are getting ready to take our kids to school here any moment, but anything you want to throw in there, doctor? Um, you know, we just touched the surface of the research that's on soy. Um, and, you know, it's anti carcinogenic properties, you know. One thing just really quickly that, you know, a lot of cancer research is looking at is how soy inactivates something called uh, protein tyrosine kinase, which is a uh, protein that accelerates tumor uh, growth and metastasis of cancer. So there, there's just so much out there on soy. And, you know, when you're reading this material, you have to keep in mind that you, you have to know what they're treating the cells with or what they're you know what they're feeding the animal what type of soy is it and you have to really think critical on 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 that type of stuff because we can't just say soy is bad when we've completely prostitutionalized this bean and we've created all these byproducts of soy and all these isolated soy properties um I, the takeaway message is if you're going to eat soy, you, you got to do it the way the Japanese did pre-1960, right? Pre-American Western diet making its way over there. Um, or think traditional. About, yeah, think about the blue zones. You know, like these places, they eat soy. They eat natural soy products in its whole natural form. Yeah, and they're eating me. small amounts a day, right? They're not eating these these products that we get in you know on the shelf in the grocery store that has all these soy fillers in there they're eating natural whole, whole food so you know the verdict 
have we made an unhealthy product in the United States with soybeans? Yeah, I think we have. I think we've we've taken something which we do with most things, right? Sure. That's just human nature, right? We exploit everything we're good to, at it, to though. make money. We are. That's one thing we're good at. We exploit humans, we exploit nature, and you know, we just have this like cyclic behavior. Right. Um, I think that yeah, you know, if you're if you're worried about soy, um then you need to find an alternative. And I know a lot of Asian grocery stores here in Southern California, they do import organic sprouted soy and it's from soybeans that are made or grown in uh you know the country that it's exported uh, imported from so there are ways around it um and i just think we need to take the power back and kind of let soy heal a little bit and get, give it a rest absolutely i i love soybeans i love all beans they're all great um start growing it you know get familiar with it it's delicious. You can sprout it. You can ferment it. You can cook it. How can that be bad for you? It's not. Don't bean hate. Don't bean <laughs> hate. Beans are the best. You, uh, beans you guys, are good. You heard it from Moringa stop, Mike. Stop bean bashing over here. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> right. Well, guys, you've joined us for another uh, fantastic episode on soy. We are the plant-based riot. You are making the choice to live a longer, disease-free life. Eat your watercress. You always have a good one here, Brian. Uh, play with your beans. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd say, you know, like, don't be concerned when people say soy is bad. Be concerned when people say this is the greatest thing for you. This is the next biggest health food. That's what you need to be concerned about. Mm -hmm. Right. You can you can prostitutionalize anything. Soybeans, they're they're fine in their natural state. It doesn't matter what it is, what vegetable you're talking about. If we're going to be making health claims about it that's where you need to say wait a minute what are you selling you know like i love watercress but you could take specific chemicals out of watercress and then and then put it in a pill put it in some kind of health food product it's no longer healthy for you yeah right when you, when you break it when you denature it could have an adverse effect then right right yeah wow yeah. All right, guys. So Dan, Dan, really quick, what about you? Where where do you le where do you rest now on the soy spectrum? Is that something you're gonna feed your family, or how, how are you gonna in approach the, soy in the in the natural state that soy is? Mm -hmm. That's where we're gonna be at. Cutting out the um, processed foods, step one, which also have a lot of processed soy in them, mm -hmm. and then getting and then trying to stay as uh, as traditional with the soy. That's that's my takeaway here. Uh, tofu, tempeh. We we do almond milk, so we're not really doing the soy mm -hmm. milk. We're not. Mm -hmm. And not, oddly enough, when we broke away from dairy, we don't drink. Like it takes us a week and a half to go through a, a thing of almond milk. Yeah. So it's like in moderation, it's it, fine. Yeah, and we're not even doing that much cereal anymore. You so. know, it's really funny because now, just you said that now that soy has been under attack for so long, it's like sprouted. It's it's been a catalyst Sprout. to make these other products right so now people are coming out with pea protein milk and almond milk and oat milk sure. and, right so all these and now we're now it's like okay well now we have to try to figure out if these products are having an adverse effect so yeah. don't worry about don't worry about soybeans <laughs> worry about claims about the next superfood yes that's yes. where that's where you need to be because that's the, the marketing in, that's the industry trying to fight for your dollar right and even the health industry they're doing the same thing that the you know the other other industries are doing. They're they're trying to compete for your there's, dollar. There's good intentions. Yes, but there's also money to be made. Yes. So you got to do your own research, and you got to grow your own garden. Play with your beans. <laughs> All yes. right, guys. We are plant based, right? <laughs>